Welcome to the John McAllister Report, where John McAllister, top football evaluator, interviews college and high school coaches and athletes from around the country. Sit back and enjoy today's podcast. Hello, I'm John McAllister, and today on my video podcast, I'm going to talk with former Ohio high school football coach and went on and a member of the Ohio High School Football Hall of Fame, Mike Mock. Mike is in Missouri. He begins his ninth year at Springdale High School in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, he begins his ninth year and excited to talk about him. All his three boys, Jonathan, Maddie, and Ben. And uh, we'll get whatever all the Mocks are doing. They have a very good football team. They're, they play this Friday, and the first game, they only play nine games in Missouri, with and then their playoffs. But a sit, please sit back and enjoy, I'm sure, a, an enlightening and a funny conversation with Mike Mock. Today, as I said earlier, my guest is Mike Mock, the former Ohio high school football coach, a really close friend of mine, a former Kenton high school football coach, and now lives in Missouri. Coach Mock, how are you? I'm doing great, John. I'm uh, excited for another fall football season. Uh, our kids work really hard. Uh, really excited about the season beginning. We, you know, we're a week behind Ohio, and. Um, just anxious to see how the guys are going to do this year. We, we feel pretty confident that uh, we're going to be competitive, so we're just anxious to see what we can do on a Friday night. That's good. That's really good. And still the spread, right? Or yeah, we think we, we think we have maybe one of the best quarterbacks in the state of Missouri playing for us. You know, this will be a senior year. He had a great year last year as a junior and really done good in our offseason and had a good summer. So we're excited about him being our leader and uh, taking us into a hopefully a successful year. It's good. I, let's – Let's. We're getting away from what I where I wanted to go. But anyway, let's talk about in out of season. I see so many pictures on on uh, Facebook with Jonathan puts them up. Of course, he's in every one of them flexing his muscles. But Jonathan and who else works the program with you? Well, all of our assistant coaches help in the off season. You know, Jonathan kind of runs our weightlifting program. Does a great job getting our guys there in the morning. We train every morning at five thirty a.m. to seven. And uh, guys had a great all season, five days a week. Uh, Maddie's there, Ben's there, I'm there. Um, you know, our other assistant coaches that are able to be there, Coach McCarthy's there. So, you know, we have a good representative representation of our coaching staff to supervise and work with our kids and begin to build uh, their strength and get them ready for the football season. Off season's huge, isn't it, Mike? Well, I think it is for us as it is for any program. You know, right. any, anytime you're active and busy, that's a good thing for your team. My goodness, yeah, off-season programs are getting more and more important. I mean, they've always been important, but more and more guys are getting into it now, I think. I think okay. they are, John. And, and while we're talking about that, I'm, I just want to make a statement, too. You know, we, we encourage all of our kids to be involved in winter sports and spring sports. Uh, I think being involved in more than one sport is a good thing for you. And so, you know, we are, our quarterbacks are one of our better basketball players. Uh, we have kids on our team that are wrestlers play soccer, uh, you know, one of our best defensive linemen, one of our best pitchers in baseball. So uh, we really try to encourage them to be involved in multiple sports. I think that's a good thing. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who feel otherwise, but uh, I'm a big promoter of that. Well, then some other sports feel that way. That you I would say, really... say all did. <laughs> no, I mean, some other programs think that they got to concentrate on their program. And well, not, you, only get to be, you only get to be a kid once, you know, and, and right. the opportunities and experiences I had being involved in basketball and in baseball, you know, I think make me a better football player. And that's the way I feel even today. Well, you know, we've obviously talked about Kenton and most of the people watch going to watch this are very familiar with Ohio football and Mike Mock and the boys, Brian, Jonathan and, and Maddie. And uh, 
but let's talk about let's compare first Ohio with with Missouri football, high school football. What would what's the difference? Like well, this difference. Well, I'll tell you, first of all, I spent 35 years coaching in Ohio and had great experiences at every program from Bluffton to Dublin uh, Kaufman to uh, working there at Kent. And I had great experiences. I had great people that I worked with. Football was important to those communities, and uh, they uh, really did everything they could to help you build and develop the program, uh, keep your athletes busy and involved in activities. Um, you know, we have a similar thing here in Springfield, you know, Missouri, at, at Glendale. You know, I have uh, good support from our uh, administration. Um, our kids are working really hard. Our, our parents have really bought in. Uh, we're sitting right now with probably the most players we've had involved in the program the eight years I've been here, this being our ninth. Uh, you know, we're right around 95 to 100 players on our team. So, uh, you know, the uh, excitement and enthusiasm for what we're trying to do is uh, improving and getting better and you know, I, I talked to our booster president earlier and she said, you know, we've had our best sales for season tickets. So, you know, things are getting better. Things are improving. Um, you know, it's a little different being in a, in a city school uh, system, but, uh, you know, we're finding what we need to do and they're working with us to help develop our program. So we're excited about this fall and the football season. So what's the biggest difference between country football as in Kenton and city, inner city, well, I guess city football at Springfield. What's the biggest difference, Mike? Well, I think the biggest difference, you know, I remember going to every Kenton football game and uh, the crowds would be there, the, the stadium would be packed and there'd be a lot of excitement. You know, our cheerleaders were active and involved. Uh, our band was tremendous. Uh, it's not that we don't have good cheerleaders here or a good band here, but uh, the numbers, the enthusiasm, the excitement for Friday nights, just a little bit different. I mean, it's starting to, get a little more what we'd like for it to be. But, uh, you know, um, that's probably the biggest difference I, I've, I've noticed. Okay. And then I think that's same true in Ohio as well. You know, the, I think that the more attendance at the small or the rural schools and things like that, and it's more of an in the day. I mean, it's, it's more of the big thing that on Friday night is – what did you do to get the program going in Glendale? What, what, what little things did you do? Well, we kind of follow the same pattern that we had in Kent. Number one, you know, we really uh, spent a lot of time with our players, uh, getting to know them, not only as football players, as uh, weightlifters and conditioners, but them personally, what uh, they're good at doing. Uh, we spent a lot of time with them throughout the week. We spent a lot of time with them in the summer, traveling, attending. You know, we played uh, – at the University of Tennessee. We played at the University of Nebraska. We went to Arkansas, Mizzou. Uh, we just did a lot of traveling throughout the summer, uh, letting our kids compete against different types of competition. Uh, again, spending time with them in the bus and the hotel uh, with family members and the like. So, uh, you know, those are things, little things that we've done that um, I think have really helped us. And we've got kind of a good uh, demeanor about our team uh, going into the fall. And we're excited about, uh, you know, what they're going to try to achieve and accomplish. So, and also you talk about team bonding there because it wasn't quite that way when you got there, but uh, seven on sevens are, there are more reasons people should do that than people think. And I think team bonding is one thing because, you know, they get along and they get to know each other better and better. I think that's huge. Uh, what about football wise? What it was the biggest adjustment you've, I mean, where were they with football, and then what did you instill in them? Or how did you make them better football players? Well, as we mentioned, you know, the offseason, seeing them every day, working on their strength and conditioning, um, the time we're allowed to spend with them in the summer. You know, we have 20 days that we can work with them. Uh, so we spend time, you know, at our camp and working seven-on-sevens. Um, but just, uh, you know, there's a more uh, – possibilities of communication through, you know, our uh, texting, uh, through the internet and, and the like. So, uh, you know, it's a process that, uh, you know, is, it, it takes time. It takes uh, all your coaches being involved. And, um, you know, we just feel really good. Uh, you know, our guys are voluntarily coming in, watch film in the morning. We get more of a turnout than we've ever had. Um, you know, it's not a mandatory thing, but, you know, we had all of our guys there, you know, the past two mornings, just in preparation for our first game. So, the excitement's there, the enthusiasm is, and 
you know, we're just kind of anxious to get into a Friday night. You know, you mentioned about the difference in Ohio and Missouri. You know, in Ohio, we had two and sometimes three scrimmages prior to our first game. And, you know, you had a two or three hour limit that you're allowed to participate. Here we get, uh, you know, one jamboree of about, uh, I think it's 38 plays of offense, 38 plays of defense. And that's all you get. And that's for your freshman junior varsity and uh, your varsity team. So it's hard to get, you know, 95 kids in in that short period of time. But, you know, that's just the way it is. So we had that and we're ready to get started with our season. But with 95 kids, a lot of kids, and it's this way every place I know in Ohio with bigger school program, bigger, larger numbers, is a lot of these kids are just excited about being a part of something. You know, I asked Chuck Kyle at Ignatius once, I said, Chuck, you some of these seniors and underclassmen, they know they're not going to play. Why, why would they do this? He said, they want to be a part of it. They just, you know, be involved and be a part of it. So. Well, we want to make every player in our team feel important. And like you said, right. Chuck Kyle, tremendous coach, who I have tremendous respect for and admiration. You know, our we try to do the same thing at the level that we're coaching at. You know, I want to make each one of those players that's on our team feel important, feel a part of our team. And it's amazing to me. I was just watching our freshman practice tonight, how much improvement they've made just in the last two weeks through coaching and involvement and uh, and teaching the fundamentals and doing the little things that we need them to do to be successful in our program. So, you know, we're excited about the direction that we're going and how our players are doing. Our parents are buying in. And so, um, you know, it's important and significant to, to compete and play in the games, but you'd like to see other things being done. And I feel real good about what our guys are doing right now. Okay. That's really super. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you talked about coaches, coaches in the building how many our coaches are in the building or uh, for on your staff? Your varsity, right now, yeah, varsity. Right now, we have Ben and myself, and you know we're pretty active with our guys. Um, we have a couple, you know, kids out that normally hadn't been out that are going to really help us. Uh, coach McCarthy uh, is one of our history teachers. He's a wide receivers coach, and then Coach uh, Kilgo coaches the defensive line. So I only have four coaches on staff that are in the building. Okay. And then, you know, I've got Ben and Maddie and, um, excuse me, Jonathan and Maddie. And, and um, you know, we just hired uh, Brent, um, Grant Winstrom, who uh, was a tremendous player in the NFL, played at Nebraska. He just came on board. He's working on the defensive line. And uh, one of my other coaches is a coach at another city school here in Springfield that's working with us, a former graduate at Glendale. Uh, he doesn't coach at Glendale, but, you know, one of the schools in Springfield. Uh, Coach McGuire, and he does a tremendous job. So I'm really excited about our coaching staff. I think we've got a, a, a great group of guys that are doing a good job bringing our guys around. Another part, I we didn't do this a couple of years ago. You've been there nine years, haven't you? Or you start, start, my, start my ninth year. I remember packing all those trucks with you and loading all those trucks and everything to get out there. Remember those? Well, days? I didn't know you were so good at packing and organizing this. If I couldn't have done it without you, and I appreciated your help. I wanted to show you one more thing, then we'll get back to seriousness. Look at that, man. <laughs> Do you yep. miss those days? Uh, John, I had so much fun just spending time with you talking about football in general and life in general and our families. And, uh, you know, really one of the things I truly miss is your friendship and getting to see you every day. You know that for sure. Okay, let's talk about – I'm sure people would will follow in this. What – you know, you talked about your, your boys – what is Ben Mock doing now? And be, you've got you got as much time as you want. Ben, Maddie, and Jonathan, what's Ben doing now? I'll tell you what I'm most proud of. Number one, I'm proud of him and the father that he is to the children that he has. You know, he's got a little, a new baby boy that's about a year and a half now. He's got two little girls that he is a tremendous father to. Uh, he's married to a beautiful woman who is uh, a great personality and somebody that we've really enjoyed being in our family. So I'm really proud of who he is as a as a young man and uh, the example he's setting for his family and being in church on Sunday. And um, I hate to say it, he's always taking care of me, making sure I've got everything done electronically and getting things turned in and, and looking after his dad. But I'm just really proud of Ben, not only as a football coach and work with our young men in our football program, but the husband and father that he is. Good. What um, is he coach, Mike? 
Jonathan or Ben Ben runs all of our offense, calls the plays, works with our quarterbacks. He spends a lot of time working with other quarterbacks and receivers in the area. In fact, really throughout the state of Missouri. So he's always at the school working with somebody, trying to help make them better. And, um, you know, still finding time to spend time at home with his family. You know, he cost me money when you guys went to Missouri. You know, we're going to get a little myself and get him working with quarterbacks. But uh, it fell through. So <laughs> Yeah, he does a tremendous job, I can tell you that. Okay, tell me about Matty Mott. How's Matty doing? Matty is uh, one of the most uh, enthusiastic, exciting, excited coaches that we have on our staff. You know, he's a joy every day to see him. Again, he's married a beautiful woman who's a great wife, um, somebody that we love and enjoy spending time with her and, and Maddie as well. But, you know, all of our kids come to Maddie. Um, you know, the other morning I came in, you know, he's got, I think, 18, 19 defensive backs there watching film, getting ready for the game. And uh, handles all of our equipment at the school. Uh, is doing very well in his real estate and his, you know, his business life. But, you know, just like his dad, he likes being around the kids. He likes working with our uh, football program. And uh, I'm really, you know, it's kind of funny because I've asked him to go over and be a defensive back coach. And he has spent so much time getting himself ready to understand the fundamentals. I had Todd Alice, one of the great coaches of Ohio, um, come back, come out here and spend a week with him and just going over the little things to help make him better coach. And he sat there and wrote everything down, absorbed everything, and, wow. and is doing a lot of things that Todd shared with him. So I'm real excited about Matty being a coach and what he's doing. I'm excited about him being a great, great husband and looking for him someday being a good father. Now my last one, how's Jonathan doing? Just by the way, and he's kind of came slip, not slip through, but he's a really good football player. I remember when I first started the business, but Jonathan's the, the uh, senior boy of the three. So tell me about Jonathan. Jonathan's my oldest son. He, uh, Spent like 10 or 12 years down in Columbus, work or Columbus, down in Florida and Georgia, coached in Georgia for a year or two, um, was there in Florida and doing really well. And we had an opportunity to get him and his daughter to move to Missouri. And we did about uh, two years ago. And man, has it been a lot of fun having Jonathan here and working with our kids. Uh, he runs our strength uh, program, him and Maddie, and they do a great job. Um, kids love him. Uh, he's got a good defensive mind. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to play a unbalanced single wing team on Friday night. And I kind of put our game plan together along with our staff. And he came in yesterday and said, Dad, I, we got to make an adjustment here. We're, we, we're outflanked. And I thought we had it. And I sat down and looked at it. And he was absolutely right. So just his knowledge of the game of football, his, ex, his experience uh, as a head coach, and then, of course, now working with our defense and um, you know, it's just a, a, a blessing to see him every day and see him be the dad he is to his daughter and to work with our kids and to continue to help them develop and grow. The Mock boys, I would say, you know, they are so into coaching and they are such good people. I mean, they, they, that must, they must get a lot of that from your better half, Gwen, right? Well, I was fortunate to marry probably uh, I married my best friend, a person that's supportive of everything that I've ever done as a coach, as a teacher, as a, a man who makes a lot of mistakes. She's always loved me. She's been a tremendous uh, mother to our children. They love her. She's number one in all their lives. And um, not only be my best friend, but my biggest encourager and somebody that you always know is there. And, you know, as a football coach, you need that in life. I mean, there's a lot of things you battle and you go against and not only competition and things you, you deal with as a coach, but to have somebody there to support you like she's done for me, I couldn't have anybody better. So um, she's the key behind all of our success. All of our kids uh, come to her, grandkids come to her. Um, and I'm just very pleased and very honored to have her as my wife, my best friend and the mother of our children. Okay, coach, I, I'm going to, we're going to close up here. You've done a great job. And uh, this is what I wanted. I wanted you to see Mike, how Mike Mock was doing. And I also was really into the boys. So they're boys to me, by the way. Let's see. Okay. Mike, I've always known you as a pretty good spiritual guy, a pretty good religious guy, pretty good Christian guy. 
it, how, how are you going? How's your faith going now? How, you know, all you know, you've moved out there. So how's your faith now? Well, I'll first of all, I'll tell you, I'm a sinner, just like everyone else, saved by the grace of God. You know, it's right. one of the things that I was raised. My parents uh, were real strong influences in my life. Uh, my grandmother, uh, my my uh, grandfather, you know, influenced me. And, uh, you know, I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior when I was a young kid. And I lived my whole life. I'm not saying I'm a perfect by no means. Those people that know me know that I'm not. But I've always had a strong faith and belief that, uh, God created me for a purpose. He gave me a life to live, and he was there to guide and direct me, uh, support me through all things that I did, good or bad. And, um, you know, my faith is uh, strong now as it's ever been, and it will always be that way. I, I plan to someday spend eternity in heaven with him based upon not anything I've done, but by accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and having him pay the debt that I owe. But uh, that's very important to me. It's something that uh, I hang my hat on. I put on my trust and faith in. And, um, you know, as I coach and teach every day, I see kids that um, are just going through life and not really sure what they're going to do, where they're going. And, um, you know, you got to be careful in the public school, what you say, and what you don't say, but um, my faith and trust always be in the Lord. And that's uh, where it's at right now. That sounds great. I would have expected none other than that comment, those comments. Well, John, I'll never, I'll never forget the day I had the opportunity to witness to you. And I took you on that li long drive to Athens, Ohio, my little Ford Escort. <laughs> and I never seen you get down on your knees and pray like you did after we get, got down there. I didn't realize it was my driving that made you realize you need to come to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed all those times we got to spend together. I, I'll tell you, it would, wait a minute, I got to get back. I ain't got to be laughing. It's, it was crazy. You know, I we still talk about that, but you were like curves. We're down in Southern Ohio, pouring down rain, and you went. I think you got your oil changed, and this crazy. You had to speak at this clinic, and you know I'm wired, and you're like flying, and we got there okay. But no, well, you, we didn't want to be late. You did a lot of witnessing that day. I, <laughs> Coach Mark, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and great time. Okay. John, I appreciate you, and I, I really appreciate your friendship, and uh, you're a tremendous man, and I'm very proud of what you do, and thanks for continuing to promote the great game of high school football. Thank you. See you, Coach.